Hi, so we are back with the question solving sessions. So we are moving on to September 2022 to ADC paper 2. Uh, the last time we had solved questions till question number 7. So this time we are going to move ahead and solve the rest. Yeah, so we'll be solving the rest of the questions, like at least three of them today. So from question number 8, 7th we had solved last time, 8 to 10, okay, 8, 9 and 10. All three of them are complete denture questions, so a good revision of complete denture and ethics and profession is going to happen. So let's go ahead with SBQ number 8, which is a male patient comes to you to get his treatment done as a part of work compensation cover. What is work compensation cover? It means that you were at work, you suffered an injury, and now you have to get treatment of that injury. Now, because you suffered injury while you were working, your employer or the person who are you, whom, for whom you're working, that person is going to give you some money or the money sufficient enough to get covered the treatment of that particular injury that has happened. So, for example, if you're working for a person and while work-related issue, you slip, fall and fracture your front central incisor, then the employer is going to give you that much money which is required to treat your upper central incisor. Now, for example, you also happen to have a cavity, say, in your 1-6 tooth, that is the upper right first molar. But that cavity has got nothing to do with you slipping and fracturing during work. But if you try to claim a compensation for that cavity, then that is a wrong thing. You understand my point? So this is what it means as work compensation cover. Because he slept while doing duty on his work. Now he has seen another dentist to make an insurance claim. So what happened is this patient had a fall while working. Okay. He probably must have injured one of his tooth. But when he went to the dentist and dentist told him you have three, four other issues which is not related to your fall, that patient claims that the dentist still wrote in the insurance claim form that the rest of the issues that the patient is having is also because of his work-related injury. So that they also get covered and the patient doesn't have to pay anything because probably he is not having enough claim. You understand? So, clinical photo shows photos of upper and lower anteriors, 12 normal. That is basically canine to canine, upper and lower, all normal. The rest of the dentition seems to have attrition and is chipped because of attrition. Now, he wants you to have a look. Now, patient says, my teeth chipped off and my lower denture got broken as a result of falling. Probably his lower denture got uh, broken because of a result of falling, but attrition cannot happen because of falling, correct? So, you examine and you realize that most of his dental condition is not as a result of this injury. His lower acrylic uh, denture is broken, which is flexible. And the other dentist has made a claim for the patient. So, he gets money to repair his other teeth as well. So, the patient is saying the other dentist is helping me. Why can't you also help me? So, anyways, let's see the first sub question. The first sub question is, what would be the ideal treatment for him? They are asking about the RPD. Since the lower flexible uh, denture is broken, instead of the question asking you what you should do, they are asking you what would be the ideal treatment. Now, ideal treatment for an RPD when a patient is having attrition and lower anteriors present and some of them broken has to be cobalt chromium. Okay, that's the ideal RPD. You can ask why not implant you are a general dentist. You are not going to do implant. You can say what ideal treatment should be implant, but you don't know the bone condition. And implant is like a very high level treatment, which is an optional treatment. Nobody has ever said that that is an ideal treatment. But when you come to RPD, which is the best RPD for the patient, then it goes to cobalt chromium denture. Now, even though his dental condition is not a result of injury, the other dentist is willing to cover it. So that the company can pay and the patient get a larger compensation for his dental treatment. He shows you a slip in which this is written. It's a slip. Okay, just a paper. How do you handle that claim for the insurance in this situation? See, you have to be a very professional person. Now, ADC is asking you this question to check the level of your professionalism. 
101 percent this question is a marked question meaning this question will be marked and you should mark it right if you mark this question wrong you have high chances of failing even though all of your other answers will be right because if you are not professional you can't practice professionalism is very important now what do you what do you mean when i say you have to be professional it means that you're not going to straight away complain about that dentist to any other person without investigating it properly so you so definitely you will not report it to ad or afra or australia because you don't know the exact situation you cannot just believe the patient's word so first option should be you should contact the other dentist and ask him are you actually doing this or this patient is making up a story you have to clarify and get the both sides of the story if this option is not given that you can contact the other dentist then you should tell the patient that you cannot cover this work in the claim the option f becomes the right answer in that scenario if option d is not given okay you can definitely not do the option a that do the same thing what the other dentist did to avoid reputation damage what reputation damage doing unethical thing is reputation damage but if you are choosing not to do an unethical thing it's not a reputation damage so option a you will not do b c and e also you will not do so in the exam only five options will be given here we have given you six options to make you understand the option d and option f both can be correct you understand but both the options together will not be given in the exam so i hope this is clear you have to act like an absolute professional and you should contact the other dentist or you can refuse to cover it's not like refuse to cover any work in the insurance bill because uh, the flexible denture broken probably that is the result of the injury but the attrition is not a result of the injury hence here the option is d so in the exam read the questions very properly and think as a dentist what would you do in that situation the same patient was also interested in bleaching but according to your findings and diagnosis his dentition needs a lot of work to be done and he is not a suitable candidate for the bleaching procedure because of his current dental health so what advice will you give to the patient discuss with the patient that other treatment needs to be done before we proceed with the bleaching that is the right option refer to prosthodontist mm, the question is not mentioning what are the dental work probably it must be just cleaning and polishing you know that you can do for that you don't have to refer to a prosthodontist go ahead with the treatment you cannot do bleaching if uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, like calculus or some cavities present so you have to finish all that before you go with that treatment refuse to do the treatment why do you want to refuse when the option of discussing with the patient is there so option a what is the management of his worn down dentition he has general teeth wear and short crowns that's not crow that's crown spelling mistake well um here you can refer to the prosthodontist see when there is generalized attrition you cannot just build up with composites it would never stay because first of all uh, attrition is like tooth to tooth wear contacts you do the composite the same wearing is going to happen plus when there is attrition that has happened there is decrease in the vertical dimension in occlusion so uh, it's only a prosthodontist who specializes in oral uh, full mouth rehabilitation they can increase the video with the face bow and stuff and then give the crown so that a general dentist is out of his scope of practice like a basic general dentist if he has learned it fair enough but normally referral to a prosthodontist makes the right choice so uh, referring to the prosthodontist is the right answer patient complains of sensitivity what test would you conduct before your treatment uh well if the patient says his teeth are sensitive my first choice of test is a cold pulp test which is like a pulp sensitivity test probing i up a percussion or secondary so my first priority of pulp testing is pulp sensitivity test okay now sbq9 the patient is concerned about his upper front teeth he has difficulty eating he wishes primarily to improve his appearance and seems to be sufficiently motivated to complete a course of complex dental treatment great the patient has only recently started to attend his dentist regularly after a 10 year period without any treatment all teeth respond normally to cold and electric pulp sensibility testing meaning the vitality testing has been done and all the teeth are normal when asked to bite his teeth together the patient adopts a forward mandibular posture 
resulting in a class 3 incisal relationship. So while biting, he's getting his mandibular head. Okay. So what is the patient suffering from? See, if the patient is getting a forward mandibular anterior teeth, he's trying to have a teeth-to-teeth -teeth contact, which is going to result in more attrition. Now, in this particular picture, you cannot see the occlusal areas of the posterior teeth and you can see a bit of the premolars but the premolars do not look that much treated plus by default he is not having a class 3 relationship he's he's voluntarily getting his mandible ahead and getting a treason of his anterior teeth so since only the anterior teeth are treated but they are treated to a great extent my answer would be localized Savior abrasive tooth wear. Okay. The presence of staining suggests that the erosion may be. Now, see, if the patient is having erosion, erosion means it nicely takes off layers of the teeth by chemical dissolution of the tooth structure. Now, if there is superficial chemical dissolution of the tooth structure, then the teeth would look very nice and white and, you know, that concave erosive appearance will be there. There won't be any staining. But if there is a staining, it means that the erosion has stopped. Adhesion may continue, but erosion has stopped. Stopped meaning it's inactive. What is the main problem in providing restoration for these teeth? Now, if you see the anterior teeth, the main issue is the short height of the crown because the there is teeth to teeth contact the video has decreased anteriorly the patient is getting the forward mandibular anterior position plus the height of the crowns is so short when you're going to prepare the tooth barely any tooth structure is going to be there plus there would be pulp exposure as well so in such a scenario a crown lengthening procedure has to be done an ideal crown lengthening means you reflect the gums a bit, you reduce uh, 1 or 2 mm of the gums and in order to maintain the biological width, you have to reduce sometimes a superficial bony structure also. So you reduce a part of the bone and you reduce a part of the gum and you uh, increase the clinical length of the crown. So crown lengthening has to be done. So here this option becomes the short height of the crowns. The next question, surgical crown lending achieved all of the following points except. Except meaning what is not done in the surgical crown lengthening. So what is not done is the question is asking. Option C, mucoperiosteal tissue flap is raised. That is correct. Option B, incisions are traced along the stent. If you are making a stent and then soft tissue is excised to recontour the gingival architecture, that is also correct. That is a part of surgical crown lengthening. Option A, there is a diagnostic wax up, uh, which is converted to form a clear stent. That is also correct. Option D, bone removal is optional, is incorrect because when you are doing a surgical crown lengthening and in such a short clinical crowns, as given in this picture, uh, you cannot do the crown lengthening without removing the bone. So it's not optional, it is mandatory in this scenario. Hence, this is the answer. Now, disadvantages of crown lengthening include all of the following except, meaning what is not a disadvantage. Option B, the preparation is tall and wide, is it actually an advantage which is what you want. So that is not a disadvantage. Let's see what are the disadvantages though. The cross-sectional area of the root is smaller than the crown. That is true. It can result in loss of interdental papilla. Again, true. The final restoration is more triangular shape. That is true because uh, clinical crown lengthening, as the tooth goes apically, it becomes narrow and narrow. So the final restoration obviously would be more narrow and triangular in shape. Some patients will develop significant tooth sensitivity. Well, it's a vital tooth and if you're going to expose a part of the root, it may be a little more sensitive. So that is correct. That is a disadvantage. The only disadvantage is not that meaning the only advantage is you'll get a taller crown for preparation, meaning you'll get more of retention so the crowns won't come out. And the last question for today, SBQ10. Patient with well-fitting upper complete denture and lower posterior RPD. So, full upper denture and lower only posterior is RPD, meaning the lower anteriors are there, which are natural, meaning a combination syndrome can happen. You found after the initial assessment that the lower anterior incisors are grade 3 mobile, while the rest of them like canine and premolars are periodontally sound and can be retained. 
Now, he is a diabetic and medical practitioners provide you with the blood reports of HB1AC 6.9%. Now, less than 7% meaning diabetes is in control. So, you have to treat him like any other normal patient. It's not like you have to do some extra precautions. You don't. The patient on aspirin recently changed from metformin to SGLT2 inhibitor. So, he is no longer taking oral metformin. He is taking some other form which helps in managing the diabetes. One second. Yes. So, what are the investigation will help in planning the lower arch, lower RPD not used? OPG any day because they are grade 3 mobile. Uh, we can also go with pulp sensibility test but OPG would be a better option here because you want to remove and you want to make sure that no other root pieces are retained because the patient came to you with a lower RPD. So, you are not sure if any other two structures are retained. You understand? So, you can go with the OPG as an answer. After injecting uh, inferior alveolar nerve anesthesia with 1.8 ml right technique, the patient still feels pain. You injected and the 2 ml. What is wrong with the first injection? Well, probably nothing. If you have given INB properly following all the techniques, you know there is a 28% chance that it's not going to be successful in the first attempt. So it's not like something is wrong. Probably the mandibular nerve is not in the area where you expected it to be. And there are anatomical variations in everybody. That's why it's never 100% success. It's a 28% success. Uh, it's a 28% failure rather. So you may have to give again, which is what happened in this patient. Understood? What will you inform the patient about stability of the denture post insertion? Well, if you are giving, actually this question is vague. It should have been you extracted the teeth and you have given the denture immediately. That is called as an immediate denture. So when you give an immediate denture, always you have to inform the patient that you need to reline it. Because if you don't reline it, because it's an immediate denture, it will stop fitting properly when the extraction sockets are going to be healed. So this is an incomplete question, but uh, this is how the candidates gave us the question of ADC. But probably there was something more to it, which would be more complete. So it's okay. Understand the question that I'm saying. So according to the question that I have said, relining the denture after six months is what the exact information has to be given to the patient. What is the most important to achieve hemostasis? Now, this is not related to this particular patient. It's a general dental question. What is the first step that you will achieve, take to achieve hemostasis? And that is always pressure. You don't give suture to everybody. You don't give tranexamic acid mouthwash to everyone or cellulose gel in the socket of every patient. No, you just apply a good pressure, a good digital pressure. You ask the patient to bite on a gauze and then the area heals. So pressure is the most important to achieve hemostasis. What will you do about the SGLT2 inhibitor before extracting the lower mobile incisors? See, the question has given you the, what do you say, parameter of the hemoglobin. It's 6.9 and less than 7 is considered as normal. So the patient is having controlled diabetes plus it's a grade 3 mobile. There is no history of any profuse bleeding or something. So you will do nothing. You will proceed like a normal patient. Understood? So, I hope this is all clear, pretty straightforward, simple questions. A lot of complete denture questions would be asked in the exam. I understand you may not be well versed with your complete dentures. Just go through these questions, read more on this topic. Now, for example, if I am speaking about diabetes, go read more about it and how to handle patients with controlled diabetes and uncontrolled diabetes. I spoke to you about the RPT. Go read more about it. All right. So, yeah, that's about it and we'll meet again with the other questions. Thank you.